there was an option to make an offer on this eBay auction, and I was surprised when the seller accepted my offer of $55. This is a working, it's pretty much working, it's a motorized F3 from Lionel. It's made, I think, in the 1980s in the MPC era. It wasn't running forward, neutral, and reverse. It was running only in one direction. And when I got it, the thing that struck me most, other than the operational problems, was the condition of the frame. The body is in okay shape, but the frame would be an easy fix. With a little bit of sanding and some fresh silver paint, I could make at least the frame look like new again. The reversing issue turned out to be a simple fix by just connecting the E unit to grounding within the frame, which is now looking pretty nice. I like this silver paint, and I also repainted those couplers in a nice glossy black. So the frame is looking pretty good. I couldn't get the headlight to work after reassembly, so I started thinking about LEDs. To make the LEDs work with AC current from a Lionel transformer, I would need a bridge rectifier. It converts the AC current into DC, which is what the LEDs require. Now all I have to do is figure out how to mount the LED onto the frame. I have some of this plastic tubing that I plan on using for legs to make a water tower for my layout one day. I think there's enough that I can cut off just a little piece here and use that as a connection between the frame and the LED that will be just behind the headlight lens on the nose of my F3. It's just a nice coincidence that the diameter of this piece of plastic fits perfectly where the incandescent bulb used to be. With a little work from a Dremel tool, I can make this LED fit neatly and nicely into this piece of plastic. On the nose of the F3 are two clear pieces of plastic for the number boards, so when the original light bulb would shine, light would come through not only the front headlamp lens, but also the two number boards. The white LED will be great for the headlight, but through the number boards I'm going to use some amber LEDs, and they'll be mounted to that central post with these little arms. When this is completed, I'll use hot glue to hold all the LEDs in place after I wire them together. This plastic weld solvent works very well at combining these plastic pieces into one unit. After some time goes by and it's had a chance to cure, I'll trim the ends on those arms so that when it's placed into the old light socket, it will fit within the uh, rounded nose of the F3. This will be the first time that I've ever used a bridge rectifier in a project. It will convert the AC voltage from the transformer into DC for these LEDs. I've stripped away just a little bit of insulation so the copper stranded wire is exposed. They were twisted before combining the reds together and giving the three wires a twist into one unit. A little bit of flux will help the solder flow into the wires once they've been heated up. This will make sure that this connection is strong and secure and less likely to flicker down the road. It makes a much more reliable connection than using wire nuts. side of the bridge rectifier is labeled DC out and that's where I match these LEDs. The black to the black wire from the LED bundle to the black DC output of the rectifier. The red wire from the rectifier's DC output side is now connected to the red wires bundled from the LEDs.
To complete the circuit for the new lighting, I need to ground the AC input side from the rectifier. To do that, I'll drill a hole in the frame and thread that hole to accept a screw and that's where the black grounding wire will be connected. Before I make the final connection, this is the red wire from the pickup roller, I slide a little bit of heat shrink insulation tubing over the wire. Now I connect that roller wire to the AC input, the red wire on the bridge rectifier. This connection is also going to be soldered. And once that's complete, I'll slide the insulation back over this exposed connection and then use my soldering iron to heat it up and it shrinks over the exposed wires. I could use some wire nuts to cover up the exposed wires here, but instead I'll use more of the heat shrink insulation. I think it gives a nicer, more factory appearance. a little bit of sandpaper to roughen up my nice newly painted silver frame, but this will help the hot glue hold the new bridge rectifier in place. The hot glue will also act as an insulator between the bottom of the circuit board and the frame. The new lighting post fits snugly into the old spot where the incandescent bulb used to sit. Now I just need to place my LEDs and hold them down with some more hot glue. So far so good. This isn't too shabby. It's hard to get professional looking results when you're using hot glue. But other than the way the LEDs are held in place, I think it looks really good. So far with this Project Lionel F3, I've repainted the frame and that's looking pretty much like new. Now I've added some 21st century lighting to the mix. I still haven't tested it out. So that's my next step. Let's see if it works. I think I can say that the LED conversion of this Lionel unit has been a success. I can also say that it took longer to edit this video than it did to install those LEDs, which only took about an hour and a half. This looks good to me so far, but now I'm bothered by the decal on the nose and some of the chipped red paint. So maybe that will be the next installment for the improvement of this uh, Santa Fe F3. Thank you for watching, please like and subscribe, and until next time, this has been Bob's Workshop.